students, are you ready for another live YouTube lesson uh, about English in the news? I hope you're watching today with me live. Uh, if not, you can watch the recording later. So today I have an article that's about gifts from parents to children, but these gifts are not wanted. So let me explain uh, about this article that I read in the newspaper and then some of the words and expressions that you can learn. So the article said that a lot of people right now are starting to retire in the US. What does retire mean? Retire is when you stop working because you are usually 65 years old or older. So most people work throughout their lives and then they reach a certain age. Sometimes it's 65 in some countries, maybe it's 67 or 62. It depends on the country. And then they retire because they are uh, too not too old to work, but they have completed their work and now they can receive um, retirement benefits, which is usually money from the government or they live off of their savings. So this action of stopping work when you're 65 years old uh, or around that age is the verb for it is retire. So retire is the verb form. If someone has already stopped working because of their age, then you can use the adjective form and say that the person is retired. So for example, my parents are retired. They have already passed that age where they stopped working. And we also have a noun form. So retire is the verb. Retired with a D is the adjective, so you can talk about uh, I am retired or my parents are retired. And then we have a noun, retiree. So a retiree is a person who is retired, okay? I think you got that word, but uh, it, the article said that a lot of retirees, people who retire, in the United States are trying to downsize. Downsize in this context means to reduce the size of your house and the quantity of your possessions. So downsize might mean, for example, that my parents who are over 60 might move from a bigger house into a smaller house or a smaller apartment. So in this context, downsize means to reduce the size of your house and reduce the number of your possessions. We also use the word downsize when talking about companies. And when a company is going to downsize, it means it will reduce the size of the company, which means that a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. Okay, so when you hear uh, a person downsizing, it means reducing the size of the house and possessions. And when you hear or read about a company that's downsizing, that means it's going to reduce the size of the company and reduce the number of employees. Got it? So a lot of people are retiring and thinking about downsizing so that they can live in smaller areas and with fewer uh, things, fewer material possessions. And so one of the things you do when you downsize is you try to get rid of clutter. Uh, let me tell you about this expression. So get rid of means to either throw away or give away. Uh, if you get rid of something, it means you don't use it anymore or you don't have it anymore. So for example, if I'm cleaning my room and I find some old uh, documents that I don't need anymore, I would get rid of them, meaning throw them away, throw them in the garbage. But get rid of can also mean to give away or to just um, eliminate, do something so that you don't have it anymore. So for example, if I have clothes that don't fit me anymore, I can get rid of them by donating them. So instead of throwing them away, I can donate the clothes to people who maybe would need them. So get rid of just means to eliminate from your uh, possession, whether that's throwing it away or giving it away. And clutter refers to things that 
just take up space in your house. So clutter is things that maybe you don't really need or you don't really use, but you still have them and they're just kind of occupying space and making your house or your apartment disorganized, okay? You can describe a house as cluttered. Uh, that's the adjective form with ed at the end. You can say this house is cluttered if the house is just full of things and disorganized and there are just items everywhere. So when people retire, they want to downsize, reduce the size of their house and number of possessions. And part of that process is getting rid of clutter, eliminating those extra things that just cause your house to be very full and disorganized. And so what they are trying to do, these retirees, they are trying to give those items to their children. In this case, their children would be adults, right? So if someone is 65 or 70 years old, then their children will be 30 or maybe 40 years old. So they're trying to get rid of the clutter by giving the items to their adult children. And the article had several words for items. Those are all here in number four. And they're each a little bit different, so I'm going to explain them. Some of these items, some of these things are antiques. An antique is something that is old and valuable. So for example, if I have a clock that was made in, let's say, the 1920s, and it's a very uh, fancy and special clock because you can't get them anymore. They were all made uh, a very long time ago. That clock would be an antique clock, okay? The thing with antiques is that they're valuable. So it's not just anything old that's an antique. It's something that's old and it's usually well made and it's considered to be valuable. Antique can be a noun or a verb. So you can buy some antiques, okay? That would be an example of using it as a noun. I'm sorry, antique can be a noun or an adjective, not a verb. So you can buy some antiques, that would be an example of using it as a noun. Or you can have, like I mentioned in the example, an antique clock or an antique table. In that case, antique is an adjective for the word clock or table. So some of these items are antiques. Some of them are heirlooms. Notice that the first H in this word is silent. We don't say heirlooms, okay? That's not correct. It's heirlooms. An heirloom is something that has been passed down in the family for many generations. So for example, maybe a necklace that my grandmother had and she received it from her mother and then she passed it down to my mother and then my mother gave it to me. That is an example of an item that would be an heirloom, something that has been in the family for many generations. The other word for items that was in this article was knickknacks. What is a knickknack? It's kind of a funny word, okay? You'll notice that the K at the beginning of nick and knack are both silent, so we say knickknacks. Knickknacks are just small items that are not really useful. They just, maybe they're small decorative items or things that, um, I don't know, you just have around the house. Sometimes they're things, they're souvenirs, that's items that you bought while traveling, or things you received as gifts and you don't really use them, but you just kind of have them because you don't want to throw them away, okay? That's uh, an example of a knickknack. So that's an informal word, but let's review again the difference between these three when talking about items. So an antique is something old and valuable. An heirloom is something that an item that has been in the family for many generations and has been passed down throughout the generations. And then knickknacks are just informal items, usually small items that aren't really useful, uh, but you just kind of have them around the house. So um, parents are trying to give these items to their adult children and the children are taking a pass on them. What does that mean to take a pass? If you take a pass or if you say, I'll pass, that means I don't want it or I don't want to participate. 
Okay, so if my mother gives something to me and I say, uh, no, I'll pass, that means I don't want it. It's a little bit of a diplomatic way to say it instead of saying directly, I don't want this. You can just say, oh, that's okay, I'll pass, um, or I'll take a pass. So what's happening is the, um, the older adults are trying to give these items, these antiques, these heirlooms, and these knickknacks to their children, and the children are taking a pass they don't want the items. Why not? Well, some of the items are outdated. What does it mean to be outdated? If something is outdated, it means it's not modern, it's old fashioned, and it's not in fashion right now. So for example, maybe in the 1970s, it was fashionable to have lots of bright colors in the decoration, but nowadays people prefer white, black, gray, and blue. So if my parents give me some decorative item from the 1970s, I might say, oh, that's kind of outdated because the colors that are being used are ones that were in style many years ago, but now they're definitely not in style. Okay, so that's what it means to be outdated, something that's old and not in style anymore. And a lot of the uh, items, unfortunately, are junk. Okay, uh, what is junk? Junk is another word for garbage. So sometimes uh, older people, uh, adults think that the items are valuable, they think they're antiques or heirlooms, but actually they're not valuable, they're just junk. And so that's why the, the children don't want them. So I thought this was an interesting article uh, talking about from one generation, the older generation, to the newer generation, the older generation of adults is trying to give these items to the newer generation, and the newer generation is saying, we don't want them, uh, they're outdated, they're junk, they are useless, uh, meaning that they're not gonna be used or they're not useful. And uh, it's causing some tension in some families because the parents want to give these gifts, but the children really just don't want them. So I thought this was an interesting article for learning some of this vocabulary. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment on this video. I'm giving the video live right now, but the recording will be posted on my YouTube channel after I'm finished, probably about 15 or 20 minutes later. All right. If you'd like to learn more vocabulary, I have two courses that focus specifically on vocabulary and they're called vocabulary builder courses. So these courses, there are two of them, level one for pre-intermediate students and maybe some intermediate and then level two for upper intermediate and advanced students will help you improve your vocabulary, learn more words, and also, of course, practice them because all of the lessons have quizzes and practice exercises. I'll add a link to the Vocabulary Builder courses in this video and in the video description, and I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.